Smartphones. Pretty much everybody has one, so it's no surprise that millions of people around the world use their smartphone to create content for lots of different social media platforms. With every new generation of smartphone, you're getting better technology, better cameras, sometimes better microphones, but all that tech doesn't mean that you're gonna necessarily record amazing audio. So if you're someone who uses a smartphone to record content for platforms like YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, and a whole bunch of others, but you're not happy with how your audio sounds, here are four tips to keep your audio sounding consistently good for all your projects. One, choose the right recording environment. We all know that microphones pick up the sound in the rooms they're placed in. So it's very important that you choose the quietest location possible, eliminating other noises that might be a distraction in your recording. When recording indoors, try to find a room with a door and one that doesn't have a lot of outside noise bleeding in. Remember to close your windows and eliminate any items in the room that might be generating noise themselves, like appliances. For example, in this room, there's an air conditioner that should be on because it is the summertime and it is very hot, but I have it off because it's so loud, it would definitely affect my audio. Now I'm talking with the air conditioner on and it's very noisy. When choosing a quiet indoor space, you should also avoid rooms like bathrooms, tiled rooms, or really any empty room that has a lot of hard surfaces, because whatever you're recording, your voice or another sound, is gonna bounce off of all those hard surfaces, creating a very boomy and echoey recording. See if you can find a room that has carpeting, a rug, even curtains over the windows. And if you don't have those options, you can easily take a comforter or a blanket, throw it over the door, record into that fabric, and that's actually gonna reduce a lot of the echoey sound that you were having problems with. For even more professional results, check out companies like RLX and Prime Acoustic who manufacture acoustical treatment products to help you tune your room so that it sounds just right during recording. Now, when recording outdoors, obviously you have a lot less control over environmental factors, but some of the same rules still apply try to find a quiet location if possible. For example, if you live on a block that has a busy street on one end, maybe shoot on the other end. Or if your neighborhood isn't appropriate for shooting, travel, explore, go somewhere where you can actually find a little bit more of a quiet place to shoot. Also, pay attention to passing vehicles. If there's a car or a truck going by or a plane flying overhead, stop. Let that sound go by and then pick up from where you left off. Paying attention to your environment and having a little patience during the recording process can really yield great results once you're done. Two, use a dedicated microphone. One of the easiest ways to improve audio recordings with your smartphone is to use a dedicated microphone, as a good external mic is generally gonna give you much better sound than the one built into your phone. And luckily, there are lots of companies out there that make microphones that are compatible with smartphones. But before you go buying any new products, look around the house because you may have something that's gonna work for you. The earbuds with the microphone that come with your phone are probably gonna sound better than using the phone's built-in mic, especially if you're only recording things like simple voiceovers, voice memos, or even a rough recording of a song that you're gonna re-record more professionally later. Another advantage to using a headset that has a microphone built in is that you're not gonna be forced to hold the phone up to your mouth to try to record, which is kind of uncomfortable. It doesn't yield consistent levels. And you'll have the ability to use your arms to do other things like typing on a computer, making notes, or however else you're gonna multitask while recording your audio. Now, if you're looking for a more professional sound, a dedicated standalone mic that's compatible with smartphones is the way to go. And one example is one that I actually own, which is the Shure MV88 Plus, an Android and iOS compatible digital stereo microphone that has a built-in headphone jack, allowing you to monitor your audio in real time. Conveniently, this mic comes in a kit that includes cables, lightning and USB-C for your iOS and Android devices, Manfrotto's Pixie tripod with foam clamp and shoe mount mic clip to securely hold your phone, as well as a foam windscreen and carrying case. The mic sounds great and it's built really well, but the real functionality of the MV88 Plus is brought out when you pair it with the free Shure Motive Plus video and audio apps, which give you a lot of control over features like stereo width when recording audio, video resolution when using your smartphone's camera, audio input gain adjustment for setting your record levels appropriately, automatic modes for the types of recording you're doing, and a whole lot more. 
As for other types of microphones you could use with your smartphone, consider a lavalier mic, also known as a lav or lapel mic, which clips onto the clothing of the person talking. Lavs are great for hands-free recording of dictations, voiceovers, speeches, interviews, and a whole lot of other applications. If you decide to go the lav route, you have a choice between wired versus wireless. Wired lavs, like the Rode Smart Lav Plus, plug directly into your phone, enabling you to use the software built into your phone or a compatible third-party software to record your audio. If you plan on recording to your phone and you want to keep it in your pocket or next to you and you're not going to be moving around, a wired system would be a great choice. However, if you want to record audio at a distance or if you're recording video and audio and you need to move around and not be tethered to your device, you're going to want to go with a wireless system. And wireless systems are really simple. You've got a transmitter that the mic plugs into. That sends the audio wirelessly over to a receiver, which then plugs into your recording device. And in this case, we're talking about your smartphone. In fact, all the audio for this video is being recorded with the Comica Boom XD wireless system. I've got that plugged into my iPhone XS, and I'm using the basic voice memo app that comes with the phone. Three, use correct mic distance. Whether you're using your device's built-in mic or a separate standalone mic, establishing correct distance is really important because even small adjustments can make the difference between an okay sounding recording versus a clear, present, upfront sound. As a general rule, you don't want to be too far away from the mic because A, it's going to sound pretty distant, and B, all those other sounds in the room are going to get picked up equally, and that's going to be annoying for anyone listening to your audio. Conversely, you don't want to be right on top of the mic because that can cause something known as proximity effect, which is basically a muddy, bassy buildup due to the fact that you're too close to the mic. This isn't something that you have to really worry about with lavalier mics because most omnidirectional mics don't suffer from this. But if you're using a standard directional microphone, be aware of how close you are to it because you might experience this problem. So how do we determine the appropriate distance between you and the microphone. This is where I would encourage you to use a pair of studio over ear closed back headphones so you can accurately hear what's going on with your microphone. You don't have to spend a lot of money. There are lots of options out there and anyone who's doing any kind of audio recording should at least have one pair of decent studio headphones lying around the house. And you can integrate your headphones into the recording process in a couple of ways. If your mic has a headphone jack, like the MV88 Plus, and you can monitor yourself in real time, then it's pretty easy. You just put on headphones, adjust the position of the mic while you're talking, and leave it where you think it sounds best. If you don't have the option of real-time monitoring, I suggest doing a few very short recordings with a microphone placed at varying distances. You can even use a tape measure or a ruler to mark those locations. Once you're done recording, listen back and choose the position that sounds best to you. There's no right or wrong answer, and this may come down to a personal choice, but you'll definitely be able to hear the difference in sound based on the positioning of the mic. Four, use noise reduction software to fix your audio in post. <laughs> Let me say this first. Fixing anything in post should be a last resort. The goal here is to record audio so well that you don't have to fix it when you're done. However, there may be instances where this is necessary. There's something in your recording environment that you have no control over and it's causing issues with your audio. In that case, you may need to use noise reduction software, which is software that includes tools to remove problematic sounds like low-end rumble, electrical hums, mouth clicks, rooms that have a lot of reverb, and lots more. Today, I'm only gonna focus on Isotopes RX, which is really the most popular and arguably the best noise reduction software out there. And I happen to own RX7, so I can show you what it looks like. If you open the main page and look to the right side, you'll see a whole bunch of modules that are specific to the kind of noise you're trying to eliminate, like de-essing for sibilance, um, de-hum, de-crackle, de-reverb, and the list goes on. To show you how effective this can be, I'm gonna import audio that has air conditioning sound in the background and I'll use the voice denoise module to try to eliminate some of that sound. One thing about noise reduction is that you wanna to try to use enough to get rid of the problematic sound as much as you can without affecting the original recording so much that it makes the audio sound terrible. Now I'm talking with the air conditioner on and it's very noisy. Now I'm talking with the air conditioner on and it's very noisy. 
Again, that was just a quick example. I didn't do any fine tuning or deep diving, but you should know that there is software out there for you in the event you need to remove problematic sounds in your recorded audio. If you really want a comprehensive lesson on how to treat audio in post, check out video number seven in our Audio for Video series, where we cover lots of tips and techniques to get your audio sounding as professional as possible. Well, those are my four quick tips for getting your audio to sound better when recording with a smartphone. If you have your own tips and techniques, please share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to subscribe. This is AB from B&H, and I'll see you next time.